Week five in college football is separation Saturday. We have teams that thought they were contenders and they gonna find out real quick that that soft cupcake preseason schedule, oh, all of a sudden them losses are going to start mounting. And we got a really good slate of games this weekend. And we're gonna talk about the five best games. Think about this. We're not even gonna talk about Oregon at UCLA because yeah ucla is trending in the wrong direction arizona at utah huge game in the big 12. we're going to see if cam rising is back on the field and we are going to see if noah fafita and uh Tedaroa mcmillan if they can bring this arizona offense back after a horrible loss to kansas state we got oklahoma visiting auburn quarterback situations problems on both sides oklahoma starting a true freshman Auburn rotating quarterbacks. Maybe it's Peyton Thorne. Maybe it's not. Who does Hugh Freeze like? Who doesn't he like? Who's he going to throw under the bus this week? We got Minnesota at Michigan, which made our bets of the week. So you do not want to miss that. So go check out that video. And we got Kentucky at Ole Miss. Can Kentucky contain Ole Miss the way that they did Georgia? Because they put Georgia in a headlock. And then they were not aggressive enough. Their head coach, uh, Mark Stoops, oh, he let Georgia flow through his fingertips. Man, oh, man. And if you got a chance to see the Washington Commanders game on Monday night football, they went for it with Jaden Daniels in the fourth quarter around the same spot that Kentucky had the ball against Georgia. Oh, and they went for it instead of punting. And you know what? Thankfully, they won the game. Fortune favors the aggressive in college football and football in general so when you think that your team should punt it or no go for it always in the ball in the game with the ball in your hands but now on to the top five games of week five. First game up the oklahoma state cowboys at kansas state and this is a minus four and a half for kansas state and it is crazy how much things change with one loss. And Oklahoma State dropped the game at home to Utah last week. But these two teams shared 33 first place votes in the preseason Big 12 media poll. And both of them expected to head into week four undefeated. And all offseason college football experts, oh, they made claims that the loss of Will Howard to Ohio State would be addition by subtraction because they believed that the uh, freshman, redshirt freshman, Avery Johnson, was going to be that next big thing. And he's actually yet to throw for 200 yards in a game. And the Wildcats have only 23 first downs via the pass in their first four games. So that's not going to cut it when you're looking at Kansas State and what their preseason expectations were or what they thought that a possibility of making the college football playoff and getting one of those top four spots as the representative from the Big 12. So this is a must win for both of these teams. And them same experts, they had Oklahoma State's Ollie Gordon II as a 2024 Heisman candidate. And why wouldn't they? Like he finished 2023 with almost 2,100 yards of offense and the Cowboys returned six year offensive linemen and a fifth year offensive lineman. So you're like, okay, there's veterans there. This team should be good. But in the last three games, Ollie Gordon has carried the ball 45 times for 132 yards. That's only 2.9 yards per carry. And I don't think that he fell off a cliff because you can put Barry Sanders back there. Imagine Barry Sanders with no offensive line. It is going to be tough for him to get yards. And that's the same thing that Ollie Gordon is dealing with right now. So that leaves us with a week five must win for both of these teams. And that's in a game that Oklahoma State has won for the last five times. But Kansas State, they run the ball well. And Utah just spent four quarters running all over the Cowboys. And Avery Johnson might not need to go all out and win this game for the Wildcats. But it's even more important that he stops turning the ball over in critical situations because that's going to be who wins or loses this game. Can you keep the football and not give it to the bad guys? Uh, next game up, Louisville at Notre Dame minus six. Lord have mercy. 
I thought that Notre Dame had a get right game offensively versus Purdue. And then we find out last week, eh, I don't know, buddy. And do you think that Marcus Freeman is looking at this schedule and sees a home game? And then he lets out a long side like, <sighs> because Notre Dame has not been great at home. And when Miami of Ohio last week had a second quarter lead in South Bend, them fans out there, they had to be thinking, God dang it, here, here we go again. Here we go again. We've lost to Marshall at home. We've lost to NIU at home. We lost to a three and nine Stanford team at home. Is this another one? But it's not what happened because Notre Dame finished the game scoring 28 straight points and they moved to three and one. And now the competition level is about to jump through the roof. This is the best team that Notre Dame has played. Yes, and I'm including Texas A&M, who is ranked this week for some inexplicable reason in the AP poll. Can anybody make sense of that? How? A 26 to 20 win over, over Bowling Green? I know that you were searching, the AP was searching for teams to put in there. But if that ain't SEC bias, I don't know what the hell is. But anyways, um, Louisville, they actually played turnover-free football last week against Georgia Tech and got a defensive touchdown and really made the difference in their 31-19 victory where the Cardinals only attempted 13 passes and rushed for a total of 57 yards. Yes, you heard that right. And Louisville can win the ACC without beating Notre Dame. But Notre Dame can't really meet any of their 2024 goals if they slip up one more time this season, especially with Northern Illinois losing in overtime to Buffalo last week. So Notre Dame, this game is so important for them because if they have any hopes of a college football playoff bid, they probably have to run the table from here because they don't have a conference championship game. And the other thing that doesn't bode well for Notre Dame is that Louisville has only surrendered one touchdown pass in three games this season because throwing touchdown passes isn't something that Riley Leonard has actually been doing because he had four touchdown passes in the 2022 regular season finale and in the 296 pass attempts that he's thrown since that game was played. So we're talking about an entire season and a couple of games four touchdown passes yes so think about that he had four touchdown passes at duke in their 2022 regular season finale and then had had 296 pass attempts he's only thrown four touchdowns since and notre dame's defense i believe is special and it actually might be their saving grace in this game but you can only carry a stagnant offense for so long before things fall apart. You're gonna have to put some points up on the board and maybe the defense is gonna have to be the people to do it. There's a game that so many people are excited about. You got Georgia at Alabama. And both of these teams are likely to be college football playoff bound. So this game doesn't carry that end all be all significance. And it's actually great to see them playing in the regular season. Lord have mercy. What's this one time in the last like 10 years plus? That's too little. But you can bet your last dollar that it'll be brought up by Heisman voters if the award comes down to a Carson Beck versus Jalen Milrow thing. And if you can imagine, it's on the radar of every National Football League scout in America because they're going to be watching both of these quarterbacks. And schedule makers negated that there would have been a clear advantage for either team by giving both Georgia and Alabama a week three bye. But the Crimson Tide playing the host just two weeks after Georgia struggled with an environment in Lexington, Kentucky, that actually could be a big boost for the confidence of their new head coach, Kalen DeBoer, and that whole Alabama Crimson Tide team. And now speaking of Kalen DeBoer though, you just have to know that Kirby Smart watched Michigan beat Washington last year and daydreamed about what his Bulldogs would have been able to do had they been let into the college football playoff. So now you got Kirby Smart, who's going to get his, not only his shot at Kalen DeBoer, but also at the team that kept Georgia from having their shot last year in the college football playoff, and that's Alabama. Because remember, Alabama beat them in the SEC championship. And in a four-team playoff, only one of them got in, buddy. But in order to win, Kirby Smart is going to have to get a Heisman Trophy-worthy performance 
out of Carson Beck because this Alabama secondary is on a record-breaking pace because they're only surrendering 115 passing yards per game despite each of their three opponents spending the majority of each game in passing situations. Now, yes, they did end up with Wisconsin with their backup quarterback after Tyler Van Dyke got hurt in the first quarter and South Florida can't throw the football. So we are going to figure out how good this Alabama secondary really is if they're as good as the statistics are saying. And as far as Bama goes, though, they just need Jalen Milrow to be himself. If he can extend plays with his feet, that's cool. There are going to be plenty of time to stat pad against Mercer in November. Wink, wink, <laughs> SEC. But anyways, and you guys can check out the ACC schedule video and how it manipulates everything here on the Unafraid Show. And Jalen Miro doesn't need to worry about going out and trying to throw Alabama into a victory. He just has to be himself because he makes special plays continuously and all the time. And it's actually a lot of fun to watch. And this Alabama team, you know that they, and Kalen DeBoer, they are trying to get out of the shadow of Nick Saban and the way that he did things and try to establish things on their own. Next game up, Illinois at Penn State, minus 17 and a half. And Illinois just proved that they could handle a hostile road environment by going into Lincoln and beating the Cornhuskers. Now, they'll get a chance to add an equally daunting chance at playing the Nittany Lions, playing Penn State in Happy Valley. Illinois quarterback Luke Altmaier, he has been one of the breakout stars of this 2024 college football season. And this was a kid that was highly recruited, was forgotten about, and now he's on pace to throw 35 plus touchdowns in a Brett Bielema offense. Now, nobody would have ever thought that, the way that he used to play football at Wisconsin and the way that he started out at Illinois, where it's defense first, run the football first. But now he's got a dude that he really believes in. And Bielema had never had a quarterback capable of something like this since probably Brandon Allen at Arkansas. But the difference between those teams is that this Illini squad has the ability to play lockdown defense in critical situations because Illinois on the season is plus seven in turnovers and has given up less than 300 yards of offense per game. So that is a big time observation and something that Penn State is going to have to try to do better than that. And to do that, that means that their quarterback drew out and I'm not getting ready to pump it up. I have questions about Drew out. And he is going to get his first real test since he threw for only 70 yards against Michigan last year. His first real test. Because in 2023, Penn State didn't need Drew Aller to play well in order to beat Illinois. Because Luke Altmaier, who I just got done praising, was basically playing for Penn State last year. Dude had four interceptions and played his worst game of the entire year. And he's probably not going to throw four picks this time around. So Penn State is going to have to win this game on offense. And they didn't pass the ball well, even against Bowling Green. They ran the ball well. But this Illinois team, they're not going to be able to just run ramp shot over them just running the football. They're going to have to throw it. And this is one of them games that we're going to see if Penn State is a true contender in the Big Ten. Penn State. Is going to have to obviously win this game on offense. Nicholas Singleton, Tyler Warren, and Amari Evans are super talented kids and probably one of the more skilled position groups in the Big Ten. But your team only goes as far as the quarterback can take you. So uh, this game where, where Penn State is favored by 17 and a half points, oh, this feels like Illinois all over it to me. Wisconsin at USC minus 15 and a half. Now, I keep going back and forth because on one hand, I want to praise USC for their exponential growth in scheme and toughness on the defensive side of the ball with DeAnton Lynn as their defensive coordinator. Or do I want to write them off for surrendering 90 rushing yards on Michigan's game winning drive, including the fourth and one, which sealed that joint? Because it was common knowledge that the Big Ten that what style of play that they were going to play and the teams were going to try to lean on USC 
until the Trojans prove that they can stop them. And I expect Wisconsin to come in and try to do the exact same thing because those that physicality that Michigan played with, when you have to come back and do it again the following week, that's the thing that's hard. When your body is sore, your body is beat up. And that's where the USC defensive line linebackers who had to, you know, it was all fun and games to show up with that level of intensity in the big house because it was the game had so much pomp and circumstance around it. But can you do it again this week? Now, the big difference between last week, USC playing against Alex Orgy and this week's quarterback for Wisconsin, uh, Brayden Locke, is that Brayden Locke don't run like Alex Orgy. In fact, the kid doesn't really run at all. So that's one less thing that the Trojans are going to have to worry about. But Locke is a smart quarterback, protects the football, and actually has a decent amount of experience. So don't be surprised when he converts a couple of long pass plays, but he can actually go out and win a game for Wisconsin against this level of opponent when they stack the box. That's the question. And I'll believe it when I see it. And I guess that's what makes this game so important for USC because they know exactly what's coming. They'll be on their home field. And if they can't stop it, it's going to be a long season in the new Big Ten. And now offensively, Miller Moss is proving that staying in one place their quarterback, Miller Moss, that staying in one place and seizing your opportunity when you're mentally and physically ready, that that's a recipe for success, despite all of college football attempting to transfer their way into success. So on one hand, I love what Miller Moss is doing. I love the success that he's having, but will USC be able to do this against Wisconsin? I think Wisconsin puts up a fight, but this is a must win for USC. Because had they won that game in the big house, oh, their confidence would have been through the roof. They would have been 3-0, and but now they're sitting at 2-1. and And if they drop this Wisconsin game, it's going to be major questions. And you guys, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, tell a friend about The Unafraid Show, and most importantly, share and watch more videos.